Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Environmental Social Justice. I'm your host, Wendy Nystrom, and today's special guest, guest is Jeff Bruder. He is with Sonic Fire Tech. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Anytime. And people who know me know that one of my favorite topics has to be with wildfire prevention and mitigation, as well as responsiveness. And Sonic Fire Tech is a very interesting technology that you created, um, having a very unique background. Could you please tell us a bit about your background? You know, you're an aerospace engineer. You worked with NASA. You started working on thermoacoustic engine units. I don't even know what that is. Could you explain this? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, working with NASA, um, I was working on power systems uh, for planetary missions. Um, and we wanted to make something survive on the surface of Venus. And not an easy thing to do. Uh, so basically anything that existed um, wouldn't work. So we uh, started trying to figure out how to, how to make it happen. Um, and uh, myself and a, another partner ended up inventing a, uh, a new type of thermoacoustic uh, engine. So they had existed before, they weren't very efficient. Um, uh, and, and what that is, is you're converting heat energy into high intensity acoustic waves and then into usable power. And in our case, we siphon some off for cooling. Okay, that's so. that's a lot to think about because when people think Venus, they may not know exactly how hot the surface temperature is. Um, could you just give them an idea of like yep. what day so and night, the differences between day and night? <laughs> yeah, well, you're looking at about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Um, there is not much fluctuation between day and night. Um, it is uh, so heavily insulated and it's a, it's a really interesting um, analog to everything we talk about with wildfires too because it's it's basically this it's earth's sister planet with runaway greenhouse gases fabulous so, not, yeah 97 yeah, percent <laughs> of the atmosphere is co2 okay so, so it's a good kind of benchmark for us to think about actually um learn something yeah, new i didn't realize it was it was that intense over there and mm -hmm. um and the insulation because I, I know that there's greenhouse gases there i know the co2 there i didn't know to what extent so that was something i just learned um now, with your fire suppression technology, um, there's a lot that may, many people might not understand how it works of taking high heat and turning it into sonic waves that turns it into energy. Could you just kind of walk people through that process? Yeah. So, um, so we aren't using the heat in this case, but a lot of the techniques that were needed to uh, to get high efficiency thermoacoustic devices, a lot of those same techniques are being used here. Um, so typically if you try to generate, uh, an acoustic wave, you're using a subwoofer, something like that. And your single digit efficiency is 1% is, is fantastic, which you don't need much if you're listening to it. Yeah. Um, so the, the earlier attempts to do this, um, so DARPA did it back in 2008. Um, they, they used a huge wall of speakers at first, and then they used some, uh, some smaller speakers and they're basically able to put out a pan fire if they were right on top of it right so they went ah not practical and they shelved it um i think mythbusters did it right around the same time too so Love those guys <laughs> yeah. so, uh I, and I, I some debate as to who did it first i think um but uh but it got advanced a little further uh by some uh students at a george mason university in 2015. uh they went on to form a company called force sv um and they they miniaturized it um and and made a little handheld device where they could knock out a pan fire from about 12 inches away um caught a lot of attention um and yeah it was a huge advancement um and i from what i know they weren't able to scale it um something happened they're they're no longer around okay. um but our um so our technology we basically took the same components using the tricks that i've learned through thermoacoustics uh over the years and um uh, basically went to Home Depot and AutoZone and got some parts to see if we could do better uh, and knocked out a fire from seven feet in my driveway. So, heck, it works. Um, and we're easily accessible raw materials. <laughs> yep. yep, just a few, uh, few tricks from um, having worked with high intensity acoustic systems over the years. Um, and all we're doing is, uh, well, yeah, in simple terms, what we're doing is um, for fire to burn, you need um, heat, you need fuel, you need oxygen. Yep. So we're vibrating the oxygen faster than the fuel can use it. So we break the chemical reaction. 
That's cool. That is, and for people that might be standing back and saying, just use water. Well, wildfires nowadays, folks, are, are getting pretty intense. We have things called fire nados now, which are tornadoes in a wildfire. These things travel, um, Jeff, please correct me in the statistics. I think it's like a football field every three seconds or something that, that. yeah, you Very can outrun these. And the high intensity, high heat that's happening. So water isn't really working that effectively. And to really smother these things, you need PFAS, which we all know is bad. So it's the health of the firefighters, the safety of the firefighters. We can't just send them there with some water and a hatchet. That is no longer viable. So using this sonic fire technology is extremely important because you're able to scale this up to be, as you said, 12 feet away, I think. So pretty far away. Yeah. So the first, uh, that first test was about seven feet. Um, seven feet. We yeah, then we we uh, uh, went and built some custom hardware, and we've gone out as far as 25 feet uh, with a single right. with a single system. Now we've got a dual system that could go further. We're not really testing for distance at this point. We're going for larger fires at closer range. Um, so we've actually gone through and done uh, Class 1A and Class 1B fires out of the UL standard codes, and we're we're working through that process. Real quick, could you explain to people what a class um, one and two fire is? Yes. So class one A, uh, so that the A is uh, is wood fires, and it's a standard size test article, and you have to put it out in a certain amount of time. Um, it's basically like a large campfire. Okay. Um, and so far as we know, we're the first ones to knock out a wood fire with uh, with acoustic waves. So, um, so very proud of that. Uh, cool. And then the class one B is a standard size um, chemical fire. So it's a, an 18 inch square pan, a certain depth with, um, you know, two gallons of uh, inflammable fluid in it. That's very important as well, because a lot of when we have these large wildfires and they do tear through certain areas that have warehouses, those warehouses store chemicals. And then we have a big problem. Right. And that's where a lot of the accelerants come from and make the fires much worse than they are. Um, so. You know, just the technology is fantastic. And the fact that you're able to source raw materials easily makes scalability possible. You don't have to have anything customized. And then, of course, your brain power to actually come up with the knowledge of doing this. I think the absolute benefit that people need to understand is we're say, you're, what you're doing will save people's lives, save people's homes, save the ecology and the biota of the area so you're not pouring chemicals all over everything. Because mm -hmm. after a fire and you're spraying things with that foam, Yes, the fire went out, but none of your home cannot be salvaged. The soil cannot be salvaged. Everything has to be excavated. You're basically made a toxic environment. It is so important that this technology exists. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, one thing that uh, you know folks don't think about until we start talking to them is that how much damage is done trying to put out a fire and how large fires need to get for existing systems to kick in. Um, so in a warehouse, you know, you've got that that wax bead that needs to get heated to a certain point on the sprinkler system to, to kick it off because you don't want a false alarm. Yeah. Uh, false alarm destroys everything in the building and it's it's not worth it for them. So with our system, because it doesn't disturb anything, um, we can we can use more sensitive sensors, turn on quicker, knock the fire out while it's smaller and just avoid the problem to begin with. And you said there's no sound, right? You don't even hear it. Yeah. So a major difference between what we did and uh, in past attempts is we're running infrasound. So we're below audible range. It, it helps the helps the acoustic waves travel further and it's safe. Um, uh, previously, folks were running about 60 hertz. So if you got enough intensity to put a fire out, you were hurting people's ears. Yes. Yeah, and that's, that's important, you know, the human factor. Also animals, I get that. But I mean, if you talk to any firefighter, and I have talked to many, it's people, property, environment. That's their order of priorities. Right. So people first, we got to save humans. If we can save their homes, that's great. Sonic Fire Tech is actually, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a fan of this because the ability to go in and use sound waves to knock out a fire without damaging anything around you is pretty remarkable. I mean, where when can we start seeing more of that. I know you're, you're still a startup, but when can we have you? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so we are, uh, we're, we're going to be doing full scale testing this year, um, and have units available. Um, this, 
part of my background is uh, the the acoustic systems that I worked on for NASA. I actually licensed that to a, a Silicon Valley group and left NASA to go lead that commercialization effort. Um, so I worked for about six years building equipment, went through the whole you know design for manufacture and all those things. So we we have a bit of a leg up on getting this to market because there's a lot of comparable parts and pieces there. Fabulous. I mean, it's it's such a necessary change to, you know, doing business as usual. And most people, you know, unless we change, we can't expect things, you know, we can't expect things to change unless we do things differently. Right. And that is the biggest problem that we have with, you know, most of the things that's happening in today's environment with climate change, with everything. We're getting hotter, faster. We're getting more violent storms. We're getting more violent wildfires. Trees are dying out. It's our new normal, unfortunately, and we need to start addressing it. And by addressing it with non-damaging results, mm -hmm. that's a game changer. Um, so if people wanted to hunt you down, find you, locate you, what, what's the best way? Um, yeah, so the easiest thing right now is to, to go to sonicfiretech.com. There's contact links there, or uh, we're on LinkedIn. Um, not very socially active yet. We're, uh, we're just sort of coming out of stealth mode. Um, we wanted to make sure it worked before we went and, uh, went and did the press tour here. And, and I've seen the video. We didn't show it on this one, but the video is pretty impressive where there's a little fire. You guys send out your sonic waves and it just goes out. And it once once you guys get everything up and running and start showing that publicly, I think people are going to be hugely impressed with those capabilities because it, it is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we think so. And it's uh, it, it really is just a paradigm shift in how how you address a fire. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the couple ways that we're coming to market with this, the first things that folks are going to see are um, we're doing a home protection unit. Oh. Um, so uh, this would be basically instead of using the sprinklers with or, um, you know, uh, that that sort of system, you could do the same thing with acoustic waves. So it's uh, it's a bit less invasive. Um, and it's got some benefits in that we can run. You don't need power or you don't need um, uh grid power for it. We have a small battery. It's very efficient. So we can run for an extended period of time. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the water-based systems have a, they have a storage tank of water. Once that's done, you're, you're out of luck. And as um, long as you have electricity to keep it pumping through the pipes. Right. Yeah. Yep. Or they tack a generator on. So when that runs out of gas, it's, it's a whole cycle of you've got uh, consumable resources running it. Um, ours, it is, there is some power there, but um, we're, we're extremely efficient. Um, so, you know, a, a couple hundred watts of, of power, uh, we can run for extremely long periods of time on a small battery. That, yeah, um, a couple hundred it, watts is not much. That's pretty right. good. Yep. No, that's um, impressive. Yeah. And as we, as we go, we bring in a larger team, uh, get further down the de development path here, we'll get more efficient. Um, right now we're, uh, we're somewhere in 10 to 15% efficiency. Um, the systems that I made back for, um, uh, for power systems, we're up to 80%. So there, oh, wow. there's some room to grow here. But that's still 80% is very, very good um, for right. scaling up. And I just love the fact that you the homes, the home systems, because people right now are hurting from their property insurance rate hikes. Absolutely. This is a reality. Insurance companies are not a nonprofit. They want to make they want to make money. They're losing billions, if not trillions, every year. So as a mitigation strategy, this is great. This will help people, you know, they can, they can say, I have this, it's proven to work and they might, they might get a cut on their insurance from that. That, that would be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And I know there's, um, I know there's some groups out there that are looking um, exactly for that angle, not just with our system in general. Um, so there's a, there's a company called Kettle out there now that uh, um, my understanding of it is they're, they're doing a new um, a new type of risk analysis where they're taking factors like this into account and then working with insurance companies to to reduce people's rates because oh, some of the rates out there are absolutely outrageous. You, you know that. Oh, I do. <laughs> 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 I worked in insurance for 20 years. I've seen, the, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just there's a very little that you can do unless you're mitigating your risk. And this is mitigation right here. This is the classic example of stopping right. it before it starts and being able to address it like that without any after after damage. So um, Jeff, that this is fantastic technology that you have. Um, I absolutely love what you're doing. Please come back once you guys have video and you're scaling up and, and launching because I think it'd be very important for everyone to know. Yeah, we'd be glad to. 
Anytime. And so, Jeff, thank you so much for your time today. I absolutely love what you're doing. All right. Thank you. Anytime. So, guys, I'm Wendy Nystrom, your host with Environmental Social Justice. Please check out Sonic Fire Tech. Go to LinkedIn, follow their page, follow what they're doing. This is going to be a game changer for all of our wildfire issues and home fires. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.